Well, hello again for you. We're going to talk about graphing sinusoidal functions. Uh, we've already been talking about graphing sinusoidal functions, so this shouldn't be a big deal. Um, we're just going to throw a whole bunch of different transformations all together in one. Um, so, our topic today, graphing sinusoidal functions, and our goal, I can use the general form of a sinusoidal function to be able to graph and create equations for specified functions. Um, now, we're going to start with the general transformation, and now this is not anything new. Um, these transformations we're talking about are the same transformations that have been going on since we started work with parabolas in grade 10. So we're just going to take a look at them here. Uh, this thing out front is a vertical stretch. Um, if A is greater than 1, so it pulls it up, or it's a vertical compression. If A is less than 1, it's going to push it down. Um, we also call it, in the case of a sinusoidal function, we call it the amplitude. So that's a tiny bit different than what we did with, um, say, parabolas. There is no amplitude on a parabola. Uh, it also happens that there's a reflection in the x-axis, and by an x axis reflection in the x-axis. I mean something like this. Uh, if your function looks like that and we stick a negative a in front of it, it will then start the other direction. Okay, So it just flips right over top of this x-axis. Okay, um, The k is a horizontal stretch if the absolute value of k is less than 1. Now note, the absolute value of k means just ignore the sign. Uh, if you take a look at the number, ignore the sign. Um, if k is less than 1, that means we've got a decimal value for k that doesn't have a 1 in front of it, like 0 point something or other. It's a stretch. It gets longer. Uh, and in this case, that would lengthen the period. So if we had a small k, it would go like this. If we had a bigger k, it would go like this. And it would just um, stretch it out or push it in. Okay. This also shows a reflection in the y-axis, and by reflection in the y-axis, I mean uh, if something looked like this, and we stick a negative k value in, it's going to go like this. Okay, so it reflects over top of this y-axis. Okay. Now, uh, over here, phase shift. A phase shift is your left and right shift, and remember that if this sign in here. Uh, there, the sign in here is negative, so it's going to change whatever the d value is. So if our d value is actually positive, it's going to appear negative. Um, so if you have a negative in here, that means your d is positive and it's moving to the right. If you have a positive value in here, that means your d must have been negative, so it's going to the left. So that's what this says up here. Um, if d is negative, it's to the left. If d is positive, it's to the right, which is exactly the way you think it should be. But remember, the sign of d is the opposite as it appears in here. And lastly here, um, plus c is a vertical shift up or down, uh, depending on whether that is a plus c or minus c on the end. So here's my suggested steps to follow when you graph um, sinusoidal functions, and then I'm going to graph a few sinusoidal functions. Step one, the first thing I'm going to suggest that you do is determine the period of the function using this formula, period equals 2 pi over k. Once you know the period, then you need to transform the midline of the curve, formerly the x-axis, by moving it up or down c spaces. So that thing on the end, the vertical translation here, whoop, whoop, uh, the vertical translation on the end here tells us where the midline goes to. It used to go back and forth over top of the x-axis, now it's going to go back and forth over top of y equals c, whatever that c happens to be. Step three. For the sine curve, plot your beginning point on the midline at the phase shift d. For the cosine curve, plot your beginning point one amplitude above the midline at the phase shift d. Okay, so this is, gives us our starting point for a phase shift. And then plot your end point one period length from your beginning point and divide up the space between into four equal sections accordingly. Remember what regular sine and cos graphs look like and pay attention to your reflections. Okay, now we're going to employ this as we graph a few things and hopefully it'll become more clear. 
So let's take a look at this thing here. Um, remember the first thing I told you to do was figure out what your period was. Period equals 2 pi divided by k. In this case, k is 1 half. So since k is a half, I have to do 2 pi divided by a half. 2 pi divided by a half. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2, so my period is actually 4 pi. Now I have to get from at least from 0 to 4 pi because I want a full period in here. And I want to have a look at my phase shift because I want to make sure that when I put the scale on here, it's going to be with this phase shift in mind. And so uh, I need to get to 4 pi. It would be nice if I divided my pi's into four equal parts so I could put that phase shift in there. So I'm going to have each, um, each one of these be a pi by four. So I go one, two, three, four is pi. One, two, three, four, another pi, which is two pi. One, two, three, four, three pi. And one, two, three, four, four pi. And you can keep going, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi if you want to. And you can go backwards, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative pi. Now, this has an amplitude of 2. So I want to make sure I've got lots of room here. And it also has a midline of negative 3. So uh, I want to make sure I can get down 3 spaces and be able to go back and forth over top. So if I let this be... Um, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, then I'm not going to have room for an amplitude down here because this midline's at negative 3, so it'll go across here, and then I have to go two, I have to go one amplitude below, so two spaces, which in this case will be four because I've let each one. So this isn't going to work. Got to keep in mind what I have to graph before I put the stuff on it. I'm just going to give it the plain old 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So let's put on our midline now, shall we? Remember that this thing is our midline. And so I'm going to take my new midline. I'm going to take this red one that's going to be my new midline. And I'm going to put it at negative 3. Pay careful attention to the, um, to the thing that you just, the scale you just put on there. So I'm going to bring that to negative 3. This thing has an amplitude of 2. That means that it goes above 2 above the midline, 2 below the midline. That's what this green line's here for. I'm going to put that up here at 2 above the midline, and I'm going to put this one at 2 below the midline. And so now I know that my sign has to go back and forth between those two green lines. Um, let's graph this in blue. Now, I know I have to start at a phase shift of pi by 4, and since this is positive, it's going to be negative pi by 4. Each one of these spaces was pi by 4, so I have to start backwards. 1 pi by 4, so 1 space. And I know my period is 4 pi, so since I'm 1 back from 0, my end point is going to be 1 back from 4 pi. Now, each 4 spaces is a pi, and I have to split this into two, so I know, know I need eight spaces in between here. This is going to be 16 spaces along here, um, because I know 0 to 4 pi, I've got each one is 4, and there's 4 pi's, so I've got um, 4 times 4 is 16. Uh, so I need to go over eight spaces, and I know since this is sine, um, right in the middle of this, or eight spaces over, will be another zero. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's my other zero. And then right in between these two points, there's going to be a maximum. So one, two, three, four, there's a maximum point. And over here, one, two, three, four, there's a minimum point. So I split this thing into four equal sections. I split it in two once because of the mi middle. And then I split this thing in two to get my maximum, split this thing in two to get my minimum. Uh, and I didn't put them in the right spot because we have to go one amplitude above and one amplitude below. So let's, when it's stretched out, it's hard to get a nice smooth curve. There's what our sign looks like. And we can carry it on. We know that in another four spaces, this has to go up again. And so we can carry it on that way. And in another four spaces, this has to go down again, so I could carry it on that way for the length of the graph. 
Okay, let's do the next one. All right, first thing I needed to do was the period. So in this case, um, my period, remember we have to do 2 pi divided by k. Well, this time k is 3. So my period is 2 pi by 3. So it's not even a full pi. So this one's going to be uh, squished a little bit. Um, and my amplitude is negative 5, so it's going to be stretched up this way. And it's going to have been moved up one space. So it's squished in, moved up, and pulled to a high amplitude. It's also been flipped over. Okay, so since this is cos, cos usually starts up here and then goes down like this. Since it's been flipped over, it's going to start down here at a minimum point and go like that. Okay. So how are we going to put this on? Well, I figured out my period. Here's my period equals 2 pi by 3. Now I'm going to put on the midline first, this red plus 1. And let's mark on our scale now. Um, our scale is going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And across here, remember, I want to keep the phase shift, but there is no phase shift here, so that's good. Uh, but I want to keep this period in mind, so I want to make sure I can hit 2 pi by 3. So I either want to make um, my each space be a pi by 3, or a pi by 6 would work too. Uh, let's let each two spaces be a pi by 3. So that this would be pi by 3. Uh, this would be 2 pi by 3. And this would be just pi. So every six spaces I have pi. Um, so I'm going to put another pi at six spaces. 2, 4, 6. This would be 2 pi. And 2, 4, 6. This would be 3 pi. So we'll just stretch it out that way. And we can go back the other way too, if we want to. Okay, there's no phase shift here. Uh, but we do have an amplitude of 5. So I need to put my guides here, these green ones, I have to go 5 up from the midline. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this other one I go down 5 from the midline. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, cos I know usually starts at a high point. But since this is negative, cos is going to start at a low point. So I'm going to put that here. And that means it's going to end at a low point, too, one period later. So one period, 2 pi by 3 later, is right here. This thing's been squished in quite a lot. Okay. Now, I've got to split this in two. I know that between my two, um, my two low points is actually uh, a high point. Okay, so if I split this in half on this line, I have to have a maximum. That's what cos looks like. It goes, it goes like, uh, well, it usually starts up here, but if it starts down here, it's going to go like this, where I've got the beginning of the period, the end of the period, middle of the period, and then the two things that split it up still. So here's the two things that split it up still, right here, and then right here. And this is one period of the coast curve, like that. And I can keep going, because I know that I can follow that pattern. Um, and this is just going over every one. So that I go over one, over one, over one, over one, and so on and so forth. You can graph that for as many uh, cycles or as many periods as you need to. Uh, next one. Find the form of the cos curve that has an amplitude of 4, a period of pi by 2, a left phase shift of pi by 3, and a vertical translation of 7. Okay, we want the cosine curve, so here's how we're going to start. We're going to start by saying y equals cos. Um, what's an easy thing here? Oh, the amplitude. Amplitude's easy. 4. Just put the amplitude out front of cos. The phase shift means that I'm going to have to have in here an x and a pi by 3. Now, is it plus pi by 3 or minus pi by 3? This says it's going left, so the value that was in here should be a minus pi by 3. However, 
because it had that minus, we ha it has to appear as a plus, okay? So the phase shift is actually a negative pi by 3, so that means this has to appear as a plus pi by 3. Uh, vertical translation of 7, that's easy enough. I put a plus 7 on the end because that's where we get our vertical translation. Now, the only thing that's at difficult here at all is this k value. And we know that the period has to equal um, 2 pi divided by k, whatever that k value is. So this tells us that our period is pi by 2. So I'm going to put pi by 2 in here, and that has to equal 2 pi by k, because our period length is pi by 2. So when I put pi by 2 in here, now I have to solve for k. We can cross multiply if we want. I'm going to get k pi on this side, and 4 pi on this side. And then when I divide both sides by pi, that's going to cancel, so the k value we want is simply 4. So I'm going to put a 4 in here for k. And that is our value of the cosine function. And this is the last one we're going to do right here. Uh, sketch the transformation of f at x equals sine x with an amplitude of 3, a period of 2, a phase shift of 0.5 rads to the right. Okay, 0.5 rads. Here they've given me um, the this as just 0.5 rads. So what the heck am I going to do with that? Well, uh, this says our period is 2. That's 2 rads. Not 2 pi, 2 rads. Um, I'm going to use, I want to make sure I get it at a 0.5 rad for a phase shift. So something along this graph, I have to do 0.5. Uh, I'm going to make each two of these be 0.5. So that's going to be 0 0.5 rad, and this is going to be 1. And then this is going to be 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, going up, this says we have an amplitude of 2. Is there a vertical translation at all? Um, sine x with an amplitude, period, phase shift. No, doesn't say anything. Um, so I know that my midline is still going to be on the main axis because it has not given me a vertical translation. Since it's got an amplitude of 3, I have to be able to go 3 above and 3 below. Uh, let's leave it simple. Let's say that this is just 1, 2, 3. So we'll make that simple enough. And I'll put the green ones three above and three below, and that's what I have to go back and forth in between. Now it says that the period is two, and the phase shift is 0.5. So if the phase shift is 0.5, that means that I have to start at 0.5 with my y, or with my sign. So here's 0.5, and remember sign starts right on the axis, unlike cos, which starts at a high point or a low point sine starts at a zero. So we're going to put zero phase shift and what did it say? 0.5 rads to the right. So okay, I've gone to the right. That's good. Now, where's my end point? Since this has a period of two, I have to go um, over two full spaces. Okay, not these little grid spaces, but two full, um, uh, two full spaces according to my scale. So I have to go over to 2.5 in order to get two spaces there. Now, we're talking in rads here, and we're not even talking in pi rads. So this is kind of hard to graph unless you remember that when you have sine in between the first and the last point, right smack dab in between, is another midpoint right there. And right smack dab in between the midpoint and the beginning point is a maximum. And right smack dab right in between the midpoint and the end point is a minimum. And so then you can just graph that. You don't even have to know where those are. You don't have to know how many spaces over that is or whatever. Uh, you just have to split it up. Graph the first point, graph the last point, and then split it up with three more points all evenly because it is symmetrical. And you can keep doing that. Follow the pattern after you're done. Keep following the pattern and finish graphing it. And you can follow the pattern backwards. Once you see it, follow the pattern. 
and it looks something like that. And that concludes this video. Thank you.